In part four of this video series about the Briel Superboard 3, I'm going to show some more miscellaneous operations and software that you can run on the computer. If you haven't already seen the first three parts of this series, you want to check that out and get some more background on the computer and what it can do. One hardware feature I meant to show in the previous video but forgot was the alternate video mode. By default it comes up in 25 by 25 character video mode of which BASIC uses 24 by 24. But if you power the system up holding the brake key down, it comes up in an alternate video mode of 32 characters by 28 lines. The BASIC still uses 24 by 24 characters, but machine language programs can use this video mode. Let me show a little BASIC demo just poking characters to the screen memory in this mode. And there we can see it. And the only way to get back to the default video mode is to power the system off again and back on. Let me say a little bit more about the process I use to upload programs through the serial port to the computer. Uh, I'm using a Linux system. It's similar on Windows. And as I showed in the previous videos, the basic process is to get into basic and type load to transfer input to the serial port and then run a command on the serial port to send the program. For machine language programs you can send a file in the appropriate format to the monitor program. There's a free utility called srec underscore cat. You can convert various file formats including raw binary files into the Ohio Scientific Monitor format. The nice thing about using the monitor for uploading is that unlike BASIC it can keep up to the full serial port 9600 bit per second baud rate so you don't need any delays. Under BASIC you need to add some delays because BASIC can't keep up to the serial port. On Linux I use a utility called ASCII transfer or ASCII-XFR to send files and this can add the delays if needed. Let's look at the process of updating the firmware on the computer. Now the Superboard 3 has a real RAM chip, but the ROM is emulated by the propeller CPU. The ROM image is actually in the propeller code that boots from a serial EEPROM. You can reprogram the EEPROM with different code. You need to run the freely available propeller CPU software, which you can download or a copy is included on the Superboard 3 CD. So we can open the, the main program for the source code for the, the propeller firmware into the propeller software and connect the system through the serial port. And then we just need to select either run compile current to load EEPROM or simply hit F11. And after a few seconds, it should compile the software and program it into the EEPROM on the chip. Now, I've made a couple changes to the firmware. Uh, one feature of the Superboard 3 is that it emulates the behavior of the early Superboard 2 computers, that when you power it up, you get random data on the screen until you reset the computer by hitting the brake key for three seconds to reset the CPU. I didn't really like that feature. My original Superboard 2 actually was a later model that had a power-up reset circuit and I found it a little tedious to have to reset the circuit every time you power it on. So I've modified the firmware to directly go to the power-up reset circuit on power-up so we get the boot prompt.
Another change I made was uh, a well-known fix that was published back in the days of the Superboard 2 to fix the problem with the basic error messages. I mentioned this in one of the earlier, vi earlier videos. Uh, error messages have a funny graphics character and that can be easily patched in the ROM. So I applied that to the ROM image in the propeller CPU so that we now get a little more meaningful two-digit, two-character error messages like SN error. I mentioned in an earlier video there was a well-known bug in BASIC with a garbage collection of string arrays and that was another fix that I intended to do but it turns out that that fix has actually already been applied to the firmware that comes with the Superboard 3 so it's not a problem. Now let's look at a few more programs that are available for the Superboard 3. As you've seen, the built-in machine language monitor for the Superboard 3 it was pretty primitive. It just allowed you to enter and display hex data. Ohio Scientific also offered an extended machine language monitor called Xmon that had more capabilities, things like disassembly. And that can be found on various sites on the internet. I've loaded it up here. Just look at a few of the representative commands. Uh, for example, I will show the registers. Q will do a disassembly and D will do a memory dump in hex. So it's got a number of basic features. It's actually surprisingly similar to my own JMON monitor which I'll demonstrate shortly. I've got a copy of a book called Beyond Games System Software for Your 6502 Personal Computer by Ken Skier, uh, published in the early 80s. Uh, there was a later edition uh, called Top Down Assembly Language Programming for the VIC 20 and Commodore 64. Uh, both of these showed what he called a visible monitor, a machine language monitor program that uh, provided things like disassembly, memory dump, memory editing, uh, editors. Um, a text editor and uh, changing registers and execution and so on. The original version supported a number of computers like the Apple II, the Commodore PET, Atari, as well as the Ohio Scientific. The later one was updated and covered the VIC-20 and Commodore 64. So I actually entered the code from the original book some time ago and got this working and ported it to the uh, Apple One replica. Um, I've got here the version for the Ohio Scientific that was keyed in from the book, um, originally the original version that was meant for the Ohio Scientific and it seems to work uh, quite well. So it's called a visual monitor because you can visually see things like memory addresses and register contents and edit values by moving a cursor around. So it has a number of the common commands that you'd expect, things like being able to dump memory in hex. Um, doing disassembly. Uh, so quite a useful little program and the book is very instructive and talks about how the software works and is written in a way that it can be easily ported to other platforms. In the final uh, machine language monitor type program is my own program that I call JMON. Um, pretty typical 6502 machine language monitor program. I originally wrote for the Apple Replica 1, but uh, recently ported it to the Superboard 3. It only took about an evening and most of the effort was adapting the output to fit to the smaller screen size. So it's loading up now. I'll just show a few of the features of it. So here it is. It's got about a dozen commands, uh, things like disassembly, dumping memory, um, setting breakpoints, you can single step programs, uh, you can even do a simple assembly. So for example, we can disassemble memory
and do things like dump memory. So I found it quite useful for developing programs um, and even writing little programs by using the built-in assembler. And the last thing I'll mention here is a CC65, which is a 6502 assembler and C compiler. Uh, it's free software and it supports a number of the early 8-bit computers like the Apple II and the Commodore 64. Um, I've used it on the Apple Replica 1 where I did a port to that platform. Uh, recently someone named Oliver Schmidt did a port to the Ohio Scientific uh, Superboard 2 which works fine on the Superboard 3 and uh, it looks like his patches are expected to go into the official CC65 release pretty soon. So with this you can compile uh, C programs for machines like this and run them. Uh, it's a good way to do software development in a higher level language or you can port existing programs uh, provided that they fit within the available memory. Uh, here's one of the demos that he put together for testing it that just shows some of the functions for uh, screen output, some of the graphics characters and shows moving the uh, cursor around on the screen. I've also recently been working on some patches for this to support things like uh, scrolling the display and uh, improving some of the keyboard handling. Here's another one of the demos that came with the uh, Superboard 2 port of the C compiler. This is the uh, famous ELISA artificial intelligence program that acts as a psychotherapist and allows you to interact with it. So that wraps things up for this latest installment of videos about the Superboard 3. At the end of the video I'll put up some links for more information. Uh, one of them is to my blog where I've recently been doing some postings about the Superboard 3, some of the software I've been running, as well as a little bit more about how the hardware design works. I've also been continuing to work on my quick reference or cheat sheet uh, that provides information like a memory map, common functions, and video display mapping and so on for the board. I've also got some software on GitHub including some games that I've ported and related software that you may find interesting, so check out those links.